Welcome to 6.5 Angles of Polygons. Okay, so here is triangle ABC and triangle XYZ. Are they congruent is the question posed before us. The answer is yes, but what I want to know is how do you know? Remember that the congru all the congruent parts are congruent and all of the corresponding angles are congruent. So we've got all of the um, segments and all of the angles. Remember, every all corresponding parts of corresponding triangles are congruent. So let's talk about what included means. An included side is the side between two consecutive angles. And an included angle is the angle between two consecutive sides. So if I was going to talk about angle X, the um, side XZ and side XY are consecutive sides and the angle X would be included. Okay, so let's practice. Which angle is included between segment AB and segment CB? answer is angle B. What side is included between angle A and angle B? If you said segment AB, you are correct. Okay, so our next theorem is the sum of the measures of the angles of any triangle is 180 degrees. There's a proof on page 234. I want you to look at how they've proved this. They've drawn what's called an auxiliary line. Okay, this line is a 180 degrees, okay, across angle 2 of the triangle in figure 16.8. That's at the top of the page on 234. What they did is they made three angles that are um, all equal 180, right? And then you have a pair, that line is parallel to segment AB. So then we can talk about alternate interior angles and uh, corresponding angles being congruent, and then you can prove that all of these uh, angles total 180, okay? So this is when you don't have the other theorems. Remember, this proves that theorem. And it doesn't matter what kind of triangle you have. No matter what, you always will have a total of 180. 180 we talked about as being a straight angle, right? That's a straight line. So what if, what if I went ahead and put colors on all these angles? Now, the blue angles are not congruent with the other blue angles in the other triangle, okay? I just wanted to give you some color. So when I rotate and put all three angles next to each other, you'll see that they equal 180. So here I put the yellow and the blue angles next to each other on all three triangles. The only one's missing is the red, so I need to flip those triangles over. And now if they all fit in there, the top one doesn't quite fit right. I couldn't get it to move just that tiny little bit. But if you get the idea here, I now have a straight line. Okay, the blue angle plus the red angle plus the yellow angle all equal 180. And that is a visual proof for you. The next theorem is if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the third angles are also congruent. I want you to go ahead and look at the proof on page 235. I didn't write these proofs into the slideshow because we should be getting more and more comfortable with just reading proofs for ourselves. So if you're not comfortable with that, then um, you need to come to tutoring and we need to walk through this step by step after school. Okay, so anyway, the proof's on 235. So here's just a visual for that proof. If angle A and angle X are congruent, and angle B and angle Y are congruent, that means together those two angles sum to the same sum. So let's say angle A is 30, angle B is 50. That means I have 80 degrees total. Well, I have 80 degrees in ABC and I have 80 degrees in XYZ, automatically if I'm subtracting those from 180, 
angle C and angle Z have to be congruent. That's what that theorem says. Okay, so the acute angles of a right triangle are complementary. Again, let's think that through. If all the angles together sum to 180, and I have a right angle, which is 90, 180 minus 90 equals 90. So that means the two leftover angles added together will be 90. Okay, it's just a shortcut to the first theorem. All right, so now let's move on to other kinds of polygons. If I wanna find the total measure of the angle in another kind of polygon other than a triangle, we have to do some calculations. So the first step is to subdivide the polygon into triangles. So the easiest way to do that is to pick one vertex and draw a line to all the other vertex, vertices that are not um, a part of the polygon. So that's how we will make triangles. So I'm starting at this bottom vertices and I'm connecting them all to the rest that I can. Obviously, the adjacent ones I can't because that would be a side. So how many triangles do I have here? I have five. Okay, now if I have five, that five triangles, right? I'm gonna multiply that number by 180 because each one of those triangles is 180. Altogether, this figure has 900 degrees. Okay, and that's how you're going to figure these. So let's, um, well there is a chart, there is actually a pattern to this. So if I have a four-sided figure, which is a quadrilateral, I'm only going to be able to make two triangles. Right, if I have a pentagon, whether it's regular or not, I'm only going to have three triangles. If you look at this pattern, six sides, four triangles, seven sides, five triangles, eight sides, six triangles, so it's however many sides you have minus two will give you how many triangles you can make. So let's go ahead and do another example. It says, what is the sum of the measures of the angles of a pentagon? Okay, well we already said if we have a five sides, that means we can make three triangles, right? Three times 180 is 540. That's the total angles interior, okay? All together, but now I don't. If unless the figure is a regular polygon, then I don't know how much each angle is individually without measurement. Let's say the pentagon is a regular pentagon. That means each and every angle inside there is congruent. So if I have five angles and the total is 540, I'm just going to do a little division. Each measure is going to be 108. So. I'll have five angles that each measure 108 on a perfect pentagon. Okay, so for your WISC summary, I have three practice problems on the next three slides. I want you to submit answers in degrees, okay, to email, and I will see you in class.